Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and I want you to dare to dream about the fantastic racing shoes that we're going to have later on this year. We've got to keep focused on the horizon and remember that sometime everything's going to return to normal. And when those races do eventually happen, we've got a huge, huge choice about which racing shoes we're going to wear. I'm going to focus on some models from Nike, from Saucony, also Brooks, and also Hoka. Before we get to that, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications just below so you're informed of when new videos are launched. Okay, let's get to it. So there's a massive number of racing shoes coming out this year. Some of the release dates for those shoes obviously are gonna change now, um, what with what's happening in the rest of the world. Until then, we're kind of hoping and wondering as to when those are gonna appear. I've been receiving huge numbers of questions about you know, when stuff's going to get released, I simply don't know right now. Obviously, the Alpha Fly has already dropped. Some lucky people like me have managed to get a pair of them. A huge number of runners actually decided to chance wearing these kind of for a first outing at the US Marathon Trials a few weeks ago. I think some amateur runners would be really wary about doing that, you know, using a piece of equipment or anything really, even if it's down to nutrition, something different within your kind of race preparations. That side, over 560 runners took part in the marathon trials and 400 odd decided to use Vaporfly or Alphafly variants. But what were some of those other 150 shoes that were present on the runner's feet that day? So a number of runners went with the Brooks Hyperion Elite. This shoe appears already to have been superseded by an Elite 2. It seems like they've switched out the midsole and outsole to a slightly different setup. It does appear to be quite a lot softer. A lot of people have mentioned that the Hyperion Elite is quite a firm shoe. Female athlete Des Linden wore the new version of the Hyperion Elite at the Marathon Trials. Certainly that midsole foam does seem to be very different actually in terms of aesthetic appearance. I think the Hyperion 2 is gonna use a mixture of that original midsole material and that that's used within the Hyperion Tempo, which I believe's got some sort of nitrogen injected into it, something along those lines. Sounds all very scientific to me. I think that some people that have probably purchased that initial version of the shoe are gonna feel a little bit aggrieved that within a few days that they've announced this second version that's gonna come out later in the year. It was almost like an immediate kind of update. They just went, mm, yes, yeah, a bit firm. Let's, let's go with what actually Des Linden's worn. A lot of people are mentioning it. It's going to have improved durability. That was a big kind of question mark surrounding the Hyperion Elite uh, when Brooks initially said it was going to last between like 30 to 50 miles, which is nothing at all. I think they went back on that and said, yeah, it's going to last, you know, 50 to 100 miles. But I think that's going to last a hell of a lot longer than that. The upper and the drop of the shoe seems to be the same. I think it's an eight mil drop. And I think there's only a very minimal amount of outsole rubber. It's like two mil or something like that. So you can see they've tried to minimize the weight as much as possible to compete with the shoe that everyone's competing with. So it'll be very interesting to see if this new combination of midsole materials works out a lot better than the initial version. I'll certainly be keen to test it when they're available. You know, I'm a big Jim Wormsley fan, that guy's really awesome. I think it's kind of like his uh, body image maybe, you know, I used to get a lot of stick from people that I'm not hugely strong in terms of upper body. Jim Wormsley just proves more wrong. There's something crawling around on the roof. I don't know what it is. Beast is not happy. Maybe it's somebody trying to get in and steal the alpha flies. <laughs> so Jim Wormsley within the US Marathon Trials used the Hoka Oni Oni Rocket X. I believe the winner of the female trials as well, use the same shoe. I believe her first name is Alephine. I'm not gonna even try and pronounce her second name because I think I'm gonna get it wrong. But I found almost no information whatsoever about the Rocket X. Hoka have even removed the page that actually states about the shoe and some of the specifications. Certainly over here in the EU, I haven't been able to find any information. Nine runners use that shoe at the marathon trials. And it seems to borrow quite heavily from the Carbon X and the Carbon Rocket. I've seen prices banded around for around $200 for the Rocket X. I think there was even a very limited release at some point, probably to tie in with those new rules that are in place. Surrounding the release of shoes, making sure they're available to everybody a specific amount of time before. There's definitely something on the roof. It's really freaking me out. It's really freaking me out. It's not what we need right now. 
So as I say, I think there was a very limited US release before a much larger sort of global release, but who knows when that's going to appear now. There's just zero word on that right now. Apparently there's a 5 mil drop to the shoe, only 7.4 ounces for a US size 9. So it's going to be much lighter than the Carbon X, a shoe I really enjoyed running in in the midpoint of last year. It looks as if there's a new Carbon X variant shoe coming out very soon. Looks like there's a new upper to it. Certainly in terms of the lacing, there's some TPU kind of section they've added to maybe increase the strength of the areas where the eyelets are. I didn't think that was a particular problem really in the Carbon X, but it'll be interesting to see whether it's a similar weight. It's kind of an interesting move really by Hoka, releasing another version of their kind of flagship calm plate shoe in mind that the Carbon X is going to release at some point. One thing I am going to do with this shoe is remove the ridiculously thin insoles and try something with a little bit more cushion. See if it improves the feel of the shoe, makes it a little less firm. That could be something I can do in the next few days. I've got a lot more time on my hands at the moment. The last shoe I want to mention in today's video is that of the Saucony Endorphin Pro. You guys know how much I've been enjoying running in both of them here the Saucony Triumph 17. So when I saw the Endorphin Pro, it really kind of sprung to my attention. I really like the use of Power Run Plus here in the Triumph 17. So when I saw that that other sort of high-end elite shoe had a use of Power Run, I think it's called Power Run PB, in the midsole, I thought, that's the one I need to get. I mean, I've recently got up to seven minutes per mile on some kind of tempo threshold days using this shoe. So I'm super excited to try out the Saucony Endorphin Pro when it does finally hit the shelves. Or even before that, if I can get my hands on one. Jared Ward, you know, if you're listening, help a man out. The upper on that Endorphin Pro, it looks incredibly breathable. There's some really beautiful shots that they've put up on their website of that shoe. Certainly a very minimal sort of race style upper. I think it could well be the magic of that sort of power run midsole creation where you've got the small sort of balls melded together. I could well be wrong, but it does appear that that's using some sort of Pebax midsole. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Is that what the PB stands for? Hopefully that shoe could be the one that can provide some sort of challenge to Nike's Vaporfly and Alphafly dominance. As I said, Jared Ward was heavily involved in the testing and sort of prototyping of this shoe. He seems to be a guy that's incredibly vested in stats in terms of mathematical kind of advancement, utilizing all that data and information to try and improve performance. I'm certainly invested in that kind of stuff within my running. Just being a non-elite sort of guy that enjoys running, I find it fascinating. There's so many things that you can look at. Sometimes you can have a particularly great day running, doing some type of faster effort. It's really interesting to try and figure out quite why that happened. Sometimes it's because I just didn't eat a really large pizza the day before. Other days it's just because I'm tired because it's been too much work. Again, this one's got an eight millimeter drop and I'm certain that Pebax is used in the midsole. Same stuff that you get in the Alpha Fly. I've got to say though that this, this one seems different. There's something slightly different about this. It seems slightly denser. I don't know. Certainly to touch, it does feel different. It'll be really interesting later in the year to do a comparative video between Power Run PB and Zumax. I think for us mere mortals, any of the shoes I've just talked about are gonna be really exciting and fun to run in. I think quite a lot of them will provide a great option for 10K and above. I've run some really great tempo runs recently, some great threshold efforts around seven to eight miles. I feel my fitness has really increased to a level I'm really happy with. Just need to try and keep it there now, what with the strange situation in the world present. So I'm really looking forward to trying out some of these shoes. Uh, I want to try and keep my fitness there so when I do get my hands on them I can really put them through their paces. So giving myself things to look at on the horizon, things to be striving for, things to be looking forward to. Hope you're all staying safe out there guys and you're finding things to do to keep moving forward towards your goals. Quick musical interlude for you. The weather's been particularly nice the last few days. The sun's been out. It does really make you feel good. Certainly I've been trying to get out and run as much as I can. Obviously being mindful of those social distancing kind of rules and measures that a lot of countries have put in place. With that in mind, I dug out this wonderful record from Elvis. Blue Hawaii. It really is one of my favorites from Elvis. It's just got such a fantastic cover with the kind of film strip 
sectioning up all the different kind of bits of information. And there's a wonderful picture of Elvis with the garland and he's got his ukulele as well. This album always makes me think of my wife. I believe she got me this. You know, classic stuff like uh, Can't Help Falling In Love is on here. There's just so many great tunes. It sort of invokes that kind of feeling of kind of calm, warm, just a real loving, nice atmosphere. It's not all kind of love songs on there as well. There's some real sort of slightly wacky tunes too. I always like some of Elvis's weird, wacky stuff. So just some music to kind of take me away from the stress and the troubles around right now. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and give the video a like. Make sure you click the bell for notifications and comment down below with your questions. Let me know which of these shoes you're most looking forward to or if there's one I've missed out that you think you're particularly interested in. Make sure you share the video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.